Hey guys, did you know the shiny new practice questions from the Digital SAT just dropped? In this video, I'm going to crunch through some of these questions with you guys, unbox them, analyze them, and talk about what's changing. So if you are going to be taking the Digital SAT, that means you're a freshman, you're a sophomore, or you just happen to live internationally and will be taking the test next March, this video is for you. Okay, so this first question is a reading and writing question. Now, as many of you know, the digital SAT is combining the reading with the writing section in the same section, and they're going to have one passage per question. So the passages are going to be way, way shorter, and they're going to pair with one question at a time. So this first question, we have a little, a little thing. Now, I was told, and I don't know if this is like just because these are sample questions, I was told that on the actual SAT that they're going to give background information and like cite sources on where the heck these passages came from, which these sample questions aren't doing, but that's cool. So that's always something that I recommend reading if you do have that information. Obviously here we don't. To dye wool, Navajo weaver Lily Taylor uses plants and vegetables from Arizona where she lives. For example, she achieved the deep reds and browns featured in her 2003 rug by using Arizona dock roots. So this is about a woman who is using plant and vegetable dyes, right? And she's using roots, drying and grinding them before mixing the powder with water to create a dye bath. To intensify the appearance, Taylor also sometimes mixes in clay from nearby soil, which best states the main idea of the text. I'm going to use my strategy that I use on the regular SAT, which is that I just kind of come up with my answer first before looking down because I want to avoid the power of suggestion. I'm sure that the power of suggestion is going to be strong with this test because they only have a tiny short passage. So actually understanding the passage is probably going to be less of an issue on this version of the exam than it was on the current version of the exam where we have really long passages, right? And so therefore, I'm anticipating that they're going to try to throw lots of curveballs to me in the answer choices, which is a reason that I don't want to look at them first. I first want to figure out what's my perfect answer and I do that by looking up here and what do I think that is well it's probably about how Lily Taylor is this lady and she uses dye from plants reds and browns are not commonly featured in her rugs that's awkward in the path of four seasons is widely acclaimed this means it's popular popularity is always dangerous and this is no exception Taylor draws on local resources and the approach she uses to dye wool. Yeah, local resources being plants, nearby soil, Arizona dock roots. That sounds pretty good. Taylor finds it difficult to locate Arizona dock root in the desert. It's kind of awkward. I don't think it talks about any difficulty. She just says she does this. Now, it does seem sort of annoying to dry and grind it, but that's your interpretation, not hers, right? Whenever we have like emotional words, you've got to be careful and don't fall into that perfect answer, match it up, boom, we're done, right? So super easy. And that's correct. No evidence. D is incorrect because it offers no evidence. So it appears that this is going to be a very evidence-based test also from this question, or that many questions are going to really seize on that idea of evidence. That's pretty in line with a lot of things that we've seen before. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead to another reading and writing question that is more similar to the writing section that's a little bit different in format than what we've seen on the SAT so far. So let's take a look at this one. Ghosts of the Old Year is an early 1900s poem by James Weldon Johnson. In the poem, the speaker describes experiencing an ongoing cycle of anticipation followed by regretful reflection. Which quotation from this poem most effectively illustrates the claim? So now I'm looking for what would be good evidence for this claim, right? This is not the way that evidence questions work on the current SAT. So this is kind of new, guys. We're going to see how this rolls. So I'm first going to try to figure out what is the claim I'm trying to support. And this, again, is a type of question I've never done this before. In the poem, the speaker describes experiencing an ongoing cycle of anticipation followed by regretful reflection. So I'm looking for what I call a 100% answer here. That's very SAT, where we've got like two kind of ideas that we want to hit both of them. So we have anticipation, regret. The snow has ceased its fluttering flight. Is that anticipation? Mm. And so the years go by swiftly. Each coming brings ambitions high. That could be anticipation. And each departing leaves a sigh. That could be regretful reflection linked to the past. So this sounds like regret, right? And this sounds like anticipation. What does this brazen tongue declare? That falling on a midnight, the midnight air brings to my heart a sense of care. Akin to fright. 
So this is sort of irony here, akin to fright. But I don't necessarily have anticipation. We do have what does this brazen tongue declare, so there's some sort of mystery, right? But anticipation means I'm excited about something, so that's like ambition's high. I think it's closer to that than this. It tells of many a squandered day. That does not sound like anticipation. Of slighted gems and treasured clay. This is sort of ironic, right? Slighted gems, you would think that the gems would be prized. And treasured clay, you would think that the clay would be useless. Of precious stores not laid away, of fields unreaped. So this is potential, right? But that would be the anticipation at the beginning of precious stores not laid away. To me, this is the one that's closest to anticipation and regretful reflection, right? Ambition's high as anticipation, regretful reflection is the sigh and linked to the past, right? It leaves the sigh, right? Each departing, I'm like, huh, sad, right? There's lots of irony in these. The idea of care and fright being like coalescing, that's kind of interesting. This one says fields unreaped. That sounds like potential. This sounds like, oh, we didn't do what we were supposed to do. The gems are slighted, sounds weird. A squandered day sounds negative. That doesn't sound like anticipation. This sounds like it's all about like, we didn't get everything we could have gotten, right? This seems to be a little bit more linear. I have never seen poetry on the SAT before, guys, in the last installation or the one before it. So this is new stuff, guys. This looks like AP Lit and Lang. Yo, that's what this is reminding me of. So I'm going to go over more of these if this is interesting to you. I'm going to go over more of these in short videos that we're going to put on our TikTok and probably also eventually on our YouTube. So be sure to subscribe to our TikTok if you haven't yet. And we have a Facebook and Instagram and a Facebook group called Competitive College Admissions. If you wanna ask me questions for free, especially moms and dads or whoever is out there, be sure to plug into that Facebook group. The link will be in the description or the blog that goes with this video. We also have uh, books for the ACT math section. And if you want a lot more information on how to prep for tests, definitely check out supertutortv.com. We've got private tutoring, we've got courses, we've got lots of things for you guys. Okay, let's take a look at another one. In recommending Bao Fee's collection, Song I Sing, a librarian noted that pieces by the spoken word poet don't lose their blank nature when printed. The language has the same pleasant musical quality on the page as it does when performed by Fee. Which choice completes the text with the most logical and precise word or phrase? Pieces by the spoken word poet don't lose their blank nature. The language has the same pleasant musical quality. So this, we're looking for something that means pleasant musical quality. This looks like vocab and context, which is a type of question that used to be on the SAT in the last version of the SAT, not the current version. This looks like it's from the 2400 test, you guys. This is crazy. They were like, it's testing the same content. And then they start rolling out question types that look like other tests. Very interesting. We have melodic. There's pleasant musical quality. So trick for these, when you have a blank like this, you're gonna look for some clue or keyword over here that's gonna mean what the word means. And that's what I found right here. So this is like vocab and context. And this is exactly a kind of problem type that we saw in the 2400 SAT. So interesting, what do you know? It's definitely like a reading style question. Interesting to see, right? Let's dig into a little bit of math. This looks just like a normal SAT question that's on the current version of the test. Let's do it. So we have a line. We have kind of a funky thing here. So this is 1, 2, but this is 50, 100, right? Each of these is 25. So the scale's off. Very typical SAT. Um, we have a y equals sort of f of x function. We want the best interpretation of the slope of the graph in context. So the first thing we have to do is figure out the slope. And guess what we can't do? We can't just count boxes and be like, oh, the slope is, right? 1, 2 over 2. The slope is a slope of 1. Wrong. What this is saying is if I go from 100 to 200, I go from 0 to 4, right? What does that mean? If I go up 100, I go 4. So this is the cost y in dollars. So this is dollars over here for a certain video game and x games. So this is the number of games. So there's going to be like a cost per game, right? If I have 0 games, in my system, I pay 100 bucks for the system, right? But then if I add a game, I pay 25 bucks for the game. If I add another game, it's another 25 bucks for that game, right? I add another game, there's 25 more bucks for that game because I see I go up by 25 as I go up by one. So I can also kind of wrap my head, brain around the whole situation. It sounds like each game costs 25 bucks, right? It sounds like the video game system costs 100 bucks with no games, but having it cost $100 isn't the slope, right? What is the slope? 
the slope is the y equals mx plus b, right? And if I want to do a y equals mx plus b form, I'm going to find the slope of this line, which is the rise over run. The rise is actually 25, not 1 over 1. So the m is 25. So the slope is going to be 25. And the b is going to be the intercept, which is the 100, right? But this is the slope, the 25. So the 100, this is correct information, but it's not the slope. So this is very typical, tricky, like slope intercept kind of stuff, super similar to what we already see on the current version of the SAT. It might be a little bit jazzed up, but it requires really understanding the situation, seeing how this is y equals mx plus b. If you have a calculator and you can program it, you can actually just pluck points on your calculator and then have the program find the y equals mx plus b form, and then that could help you solve this down. This is going to be wrong because it's not about the slope. It's going to be just a, right? Okay. So there you go. Very typical math question. I think that's about all we have time for in this video. Like I said, I'm going to be breaking down more of these in individual videos. We'll do some TikTok videos and some YouTube shorts. So be sure to subscribe to our channel so those show up in your feed if you want to see me working more digital SAT problems. Thanks for watching, you guys, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.